do you build a friendship? Some people think it's all about climbing the ladder of popularity or gathering the biggest number of followers on social media. Others believe it means throwing a birthday party at the best place so everyone will want to come. Or even laughing along when someone makes a mean joke so that you can fit with the in crowd. But none of those things can promise you real friendship. Building true friendships is not about being in. It's about being the in for others. It's showing someone that you care about them and not just yourself. It's a smile and an encouraging word when someone in your class is having a bad day. It's making a spot at your lunch table for the kid who doesn't have a place to sit. It's inviting a new kid to your birthday party, even if it's just in the backyard. It's taking time to make your own get well card for the kid in your small group who broke his leg. When you choose to be a friend, you create a safe, welcoming place for others. You'll discover you're building true friendships and others will see God at work in your life. That's why friendship is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Cause worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful. Cause I never had a friend like you. I sure do have a lot of friends. I have 2,762 of them. Uh, I met this girl in kindergarten and then she moved away after that. And oh, this guy friended me after I gave him my seat on the bus. And I have no idea who this person is. Hmm. I may have 2,762 friends on here, but I think I really only know like 10 of them. I... Probably should have thought that through first. Anyway, real friends are people you should really know. So let me introduce myself if we haven't met. I'm Haley and I'm here to talk to you today about friendship. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. You know how to tell who your real friends are? They show up in person, not just on your phone. 
They show up when you're happy and when you're having a party. They show up when you need help. They show up when you're sad and you need a shoulder to cry on. Real friends, your best friends, are there for you in the good times and the bad. Just like the two friends in today's story. They went through what every friendship goes through. The highs, the lows, running for your life from an angry king. Oh, okay, well maybe not every friendship goes through that part. <gasps> I wonder if one of my 2,762 friends can fix a broken phone. Oh, I know! I'll just call someone! Oh, uh, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Haley! I'll be right back. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18 through 20. Now imagine for a moment that you're a prince. It's a pretty cool job. Your father, King Saul, is a fierce and handsome warrior with a hot temper. Away from me, you fools. Saul is the first ever king over the land of Israel. And since you're his son, most people expect you to be the next king. You'll live in a fine palace, wear royal robes, and carry the best weapons. Your name is Jonathan. Call me John. You got a great life, right? But then your dad hires a new guy, a young man your age named David, who's only a shepherd boy. But somehow, through the power of God, David has just defeated the giant Goliath, saving God's people in the battle against the Philistines. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Your dad has given David a place to stay in the palace, in a high-ranking army. You and David even become friends. Now imagine that David fights in every battle and wins. The people of Israel are even more impressed with him than they are with King Saul. King Saul is like great. Yeah, but have you seen David? He is like awesome sauce. To top it off, you've heard rumors that David has actually been chosen by God to be the next king of Israel instead of you. It would be so tempting to be jealous of David, to not talk to him or hang out with him. But that's not who Jonathan was. It's not what Jonathan did. In 1 Samuel, we discovered that instead of being jealous, Jonathan chose to share the best of what he had with his friend. Here, take my robe. Then people will see how important you are. Are you sure? Take my belt too, and my sword. But these are all things for a prince. You're worth it. Thank you, friend. King Saul, on the other hand, did become jealous. So jealous that he hurled a spear at David. Then later on, he told Jonathan and all of his servants to kill David. Jonathan was horrified. He quickly warned his friend. Find a place to hide. I'll talk to my father and find out what's going on. The next morning, Jonathan faced King Saul. Don't harm David. He's helped you. He put his own life in danger to kill Goliath. The Lord used him to win a great battle. Why would you kill him? Okay, fine. I'll show you how awesome sauce I am by not putting David to death. Jonathan and David were relieved. And for a short time, all was well. But then King Saul went back on his word. He tried to kill David again. And when he failed, he sent other men to try to kill David. I haven't done anything to your father. Why is he trying to kill me? He won't do it. He tells me everything and he hasn't said a word about hurting you. That's because he knows we're friends and you would tell me. This is terrible. I'll do anything I can to help. So the two friends made a really complicated plan, like something out of a spy movie. Their top secret plot had David hiding instead of showing up for the feast, while Jonathan made up this story to try to find out how angry his dad was. Now, instead of going outside and talking to David about it, Jonathan chose to shoot arrows close to far like a secret message. In the middle of it all, their friendship stays strong. Whatever happens, please be kind to me. 
I know the Lord will defeat all your enemies someday, but promise to always be kind to me and to all my family. I promise. Shake. Shake. The two young men made a promise to stay friends no matter what might happen next. Then, it's time to put the plan into action. When Saul discovered that David was missing, he was filled with rage. I knew it! You're on his side! That is so not cool. As long as he's alive, you'll never be king! Why do you want to put him to death? What has he done? Saul was so angry, he couldn't think clearly. He actually threw a spear at his own son. And Jonathan left immediately. And the next morning, he hurried to the place where David was hiding and sent their top secret arrow code message. When David realized things with the king were not good, the two friends ran to meet up. One last time. I'm so sorry. My father. I know. It's not your fault. Jonathan and David hugged each other and wept. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we promise to be friends. He will be a witness between us and our families forever. There was nothing more to say. David left the city to hide from Saul and Jonathan went home. Now Jonathan could have allowed Saul to kill David and maybe become king himself. But instead, Jonathan trusted God and chose to protect and love his friend. Wouldn't it be cool to have a friendship as strong as David and Jonathan's? Those guys would do anything for each other. Jonathan even risked his life to protect David, but that's what friends do. They love each other no matter what. Okay, okay, not that kind of love. I'm talking about the kind of love this guy Paul wrote about in one of his letters. You can find the letter in your Bible. It's called the Book of First Corinthians. You wanna know what love is? Here's some of what Paul wrote. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not brag, it is not proud, it does not easily become angry. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it never gives up. Love never fails. That's how you show love to a friend. You're not impatient with them, you don't get angry easily, you protect them and you stand up for them, and you never ever fail. Wait, love never fails? That seems kind of difficult. The truth is, for us, it's kind of impossible to love without failing. If you really want to love your friends the way God wants you to love, you're going to need God's help. After all, he knows more about love than anyone. He loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on a cross for our sins. And with God's help, you can love people more than you could ever do by yourself. So, the one thing to remember today is this. Friends love one another. Sometimes friends fail, but that's okay. Friends also forgive, which is a good thing because because this was my friend Erica's phone and I think she's going to be like Arr! and I'm going to be like Arr! and then we'll laugh about it. <laughs> because she's a real friend and so am I. So I'm gonna find a way to get her a new phone. I think I'll show up and tell her in person. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna call her or text her. <laughs> okay, goodbye friends, see you next time. <laughs>